Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Nancy Pelosi and Democrats in Congress block a pro-life ban on infanticide for the 75th time. We interviewed the producers of The Long Goodbye, the Kara Tippett story, and healing evangelist David Yancey is gonna pray for a miracle in your life. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. House Democrats have blocked a pro-life ban on infanticide for the 75th time. LifeSite News reports that Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives voted yet again last week Tuesday to block a vote on legislation requiring medical care for living babies who survive abortions. You know, even after they're born, the Democrats still won't care for them. This marks the 75th time they have done so in the current session, originally introduced in 2015 and proposed again this year in response to the controversial comments about infanticide, advocating for the right to kill postborn children was Virginia's Democrat Governor Ralph Northam. So now the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act is before Congress repeatedly uh, and denied repeatedly, but would require abortionists to provide medical care for living babies who survive botched abortion attempts. Under the existing law, the 2002 Born Alive Infants Protection Act, babies who do survive abortions are recognized as human beings with human rights. But the old law is not very specific about how to handle such cases. Well now, in late in February, in fact, the US Senate this year voted 53 to 44 in favor of a new bill that would clarify the requirements. Despite Clearing a simple majority, the vote did fall short of the 60 votes necessary to overcome a filibuster. But all three Senate Democrats who opposed the bill and favor infanticide, including nearly every senator, in fact, every Democrat senator currently seeking the presidential nomination for the 2020 race, voted for infanticide. House Democrats have repeatedly blocked efforts to bring the bill up for a vote, but there is a voice of reason. Republican Liz Cheney from Wyoming, the son of the former vice president, sorry, daughter of the former vice president, made the 75th effort to raise the bill only yet again to be blocked by the Democrats. Faithwire reports Liz Cheney declared in the aftermath quote, the refusal by House Democrats to allow a vote on common sense legislation that protects the life of innocent babies and their mothers is abhorrent, end quote. And that's the news. Our thanks to LifeSite News for that report. Liz Cheney, we discern upon you the spirit of life, the spirit of God. In fact, you must agree with Jesus, who said this in John 10. The thief comes, the devil comes, Nancy Pelosi, not except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come, Jesus has come, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Let's take a short break. When we come back, David Yancey, a healing evangelist, is gonna pray for your miracle. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. 
Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. You may not believe it, but the number one documentary on Amazon now is a Christian movie about dying? But who would have surprised, I, I, you would have, wouldn't have guessed that. The Long Goodbye is a movie made about Kara Tippetts, who passed away as a result of cancer. And her struggle was documented by my next guests, Jay and Sophia Lyons, who made the movie The Long Goodbye. Uh, thank you for coming on the program. Thanks for having us. So you're documentary filmmakers, uh, but you yourself went on a journey with your friend, Kara Tippetts. Who is Kara? Well, Kara was a, a mommy blogger. She started out um, just writing a blog about her experience as a mom. So on the one hand, she's the every mom, but then on the other hand, she was so much more. She was thrust into the national spotlight through her cancer journey. Um, and she also wrote a book, and she had a large following. Uh, ultimately as she chronicled her cancer struggle and eventually died. Isn't that amazing that, um, first of all, she was so transparent. Uh, I'm, I'm told that uh, she lived for about two years, maybe a little more, since from the time that she was diagnosed to the time that she died. And as a mother of four children, she wanted to leave some kind of legacy for her children. And she chose to be so transparent to videotape herself getting cancer treatments and going through the questioning process and going through the pain and the struggle and eventually dying. And you were part of her life for the final two months. That's right. Um, it was, it's a powerful journey. I mean, anytime somebody lets you in, um, and Kara wanted to share because she wanted to offer the hope that we have as Christians, we, we see that differently. So the world may be filled with sadness and say, this is a terrible situation. And, and it was sad and tragic, but Kara saw the joy and the hope of it. So she wanted to share her story and um, she invited us in to tell her story, which was extremely powerful. Most people close the door, understandably so, close the door and kind of want to suffer maybe alone. But that was one of Kara's gifts to us is, yes, Kara did die, but in her dying, she taught us how to live. So you're also a licensed minister and a pastor. You understand the gospel, and, and from Kara's perspective, let me ask Sophia, um, did she look at dying as a final chapter, or was there something deeper? Oh, no. Kara absolutely understood heaven was her getting to finally meet Jesus face to face. Wow. Um, and if you were in a room with her, you felt absolutely the presence of God because she invited him in. And so this isn't something special that Kara Tippett's only has. We all as believers need to be inviting Christ into our lives and not, we want to be looking forward to heaven in a way of like, we get to go there. Not like, oh no, we're all dying. Let's hopefully just not talk about it because it's so scary, mm -hmm. you know? And so she was clear she did not want to die. She loved her life here mm -hmm. and wasn't ready to die yet. And she says, you know, she felt like she was a little girl at a party whose dad asked her to leave early and she was throwing a fit because she just wasn't ready to go. She said, I'm not afraid of dying, yeah. but I'm not, of course I don't want to die. But, right. So. so the fearlessness, the struggle, the emotion, I can't imagine what it must have been like, not, not only for her, but for you as her friends to watch her go through that process and then to maybe interact with her children. Talk about how you met them. 
So we met uh, the children when we went to go film at the house. And um, she had four kids. And they're delightful. Their family is just so much fun yeah. and full of life. And they're very hospitable. Um, and they, one thing that kind of stuck out to me was that their dining room was converted into like a room for the kids to paint in. And I thought, these are my kind of people. Uh. You know, like just to have a bunch of paint and artwork. and Make a mess on the floor. Yeah, make yeah. a mess, kids. Just, <laughs> you know, and she was so proud of her kids. They had um, all of their paintings, you know, hung on the wall. I mean, she was just a delightful person, and her home reflected that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that was um, a big standout moment for me was they had a giant, long table that was like the longest table I've ever seen in someone's home that was built specifically to fit more people. And I thought, well, that is who Kara Tippett's was all, that's what she was all about. More and more people being invited in, living in community. Mm -hmm. She was such a good friend to people, and in turn, they were a good friend back, and created this beautiful space of hospitality that wasn't based on having a perfect home, or cooking the perfect meal, or, or her house being a showpiece. Her house was beautiful and warm, yeah. but not because it was a showpiece home. Mm -hmm. It was because of the, cr the warmth that she created. And the love. Mm -hmm. And the love. So there's something counterintuitive to me because I, I happen to work as a chaplain in two, maybe three nursing homes in Colorado Springs for the elderly. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, a lot of them, in fact, one of my dear friends was 91 years old, Mary Knowles, uh, came to our Bible study every week for the last year, and she just died this week. I, I go in and her bed is empty, and it was heartbreaking for me. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, when they are diagnosed, when they realize they're dying, they just want to be alone. Mm -hmm. They just want to, you know, they want to push people away. They don't want family. They don't want visitors. They don't even want a chaplain sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but Kara was the opposite. Kara not only invited her friends in, as you said, she had the long table. She invited a film crew to come and interview her dying process. And she had video logs, blogs or vlogs uh, for hundreds of thousands of people to watch her during this process. Why would she think that way? Well, Kara saw her suffering as a gift. She said a quote that, that blew my mind that she said is, suffering isn't the absence of God's goodness for he's present in our pain. So- Wait, say that slowly. I, it's so powerful. Suffering isn't the absence of God's goodness for he's present in our pain. So a lot of times we think as Christians, even believers, like when we're going through pain or suffering, like we forget that God is there with us because we think, well, he must have left, he must have left me even temporarily because bad things are happening. Yeah. Um, but we live in a broken world. Our world is broken with sickness, with disease, with sin. Things happen. And so when those things happen to us as Christians, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love us or has turned his back on us. He is there. And uh, another person who's in the film who wrote the foreword to Kara's book is Johnny Erickson Tata. And she said, with deep suffering um, comes that stretches the capacity of your soul. So Kara's soul was so stretched because of her deep suffering. So she invited others in because she wanted to share the gift. She had a big capacity. She had a big capacity. So she wanted to share that. She called herself, um, Kara called herself a desperate oversharer which is kind of funny, but she wasn't an oversharer of like a look at me, uh, taking a selfie kind of person, like everyone pay attention to me. It was more like she had so much love to give and so much, uh, such a genuine, she's such a genuine loving person. She had so much to share. She just wanted to share it with everyone. Yeah, and she actually had a genuine love for Jesus. And it's one thing to be a Christian, but it's another thing to be like, I love Jesus so much that no matter what is happening, his love is spilling out of me mm -hmm. onto other people. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the great public reaction to this movie? You guys just released this on Amazon, and now it's viral. It's the number one documentary in America, not just the number one Christian documentary, but you're beating out all the other documentaries that are selling on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, why the reaction? It's kind of a mystery. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I, I just really believe it's providential that God wants her story out. Mm 
Wow. Um, she touches so many people in so many unique ways mm -hmm. that it has to be the work of the Holy Spirit because each person responds in a different way and felt spoken to in a unique way of what they're going, what's going on with them at the moment. And there's a lot of different angles. So on one movie, on, on one point, it's a movie about suffering and dying, but there's so much more. Um, we learned a lot on how to relate to each other as a married couple, uh -huh. um, even in times of trouble, no matter parenting what. Parenting and kindness. Parenting being and kindness, kind. being a pastor's wife. Um, they're just kind of like the every family. Living in community and having great friendships. And also just growing in your relationship with God. She has a credibility. So when Kara says something about suffering or hard times, you listen because was, she's, yeah. Was Kara married? She was. She was a pastor's wife. Tell me about her husband. So uh, her, his name is Jason, and he started a church in Colorado Springs. It's called uh, Westside Church, and they were church planners, and they had a phenomenal relationship. And they, they just... actually moved from North Carolina where they had a church, mm -hmm. um, and then moved to Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so they were a, a pastor and his wife, and I learned a lot from Jason just in his interpretation. Like we asked him, you know, why do you think God is allowing this to happen to your family? Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, I don't know why God is allowing, why this is happening to my family. I don't know the answer, but I don't think it's my calling to know the why. I think it's my calling to be faithful. And I thought, what a man of God to yeah. be able to say that mm -hmm. while he was in the middle of his, one of probably the greatest battles of his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let, let God be God, and he knows enough right. for both of us. Yeah, right. it's absolutely... Um, their story is breathtaking, it's riveting, it, it really is. And yeah. there's something special to be gained from it. And yeah. uh, we're just, we feel blessed to just, we feel honored to, to get to share her legacy with people. Right. How can families at home see the movie? Everyone's gonna wanna watch this. The Long Goodbye, the Kara Tippett story, where do they get it? They can get it on Amazon, on iTunes, and uh, digitally they can get it on Google Play, Vudu. Yeah, it's all, it's all over. Everywhere div DVDs or, or videos are available for download, you can find The Long Goodbye. Uh, my new friends, Jay and Sophia Lyons, thanks for making this movie. Oh, thank, you. thank you for having us. Yeah. All right, I'm Dr. Chaps. We'll be right back. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps, and I want to make available to you a new resource, a four-part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource for your family. Call us right now. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps at the NRB convention in Anaheim where I'm joined by a returning guest. We had him on last year, but so many new stories of faith healing miracles with Dr. David Yanez. He's written this book, Igniter of Faith. Uh, the subtitle is Release Your Miracle. Release Your Miracle. David Yanez, welcome back to the program. Thank you, appreciate it so much. So I wanted to get you back because God continues to do great miracles. We used to hear in the 1950s about faith healers, um, but God has given you the gift of faith, and, and this is igniter of faith. Uh, talk about what God is doing in your life. Well, when I wrote this book, it was about missions and about traveling and abroad and some, some in the U.S., um, but now I could probably put together three books of what's been happening and, and just the miracles and stuff. I think the simple basic of just teaching faith, yeah. that God still heals. 
that God still has miracles. I had a pastor call me in Florida that was just amazed at some of the testimonies that we're seeing. He said, son, he goes, I'm an old guy. He goes, I went through all of it in the 60s and 70s. He goes, it just tickles me that someone's shouting, God does miracles still. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I think the most recent thing was, you know, it's not hard to go preach in the mission field called Hawaii. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. But the wonderful thing is that we had so many miracles there. I was there in May. I was there in November of last year, and I just went back this year, um, last week actually. And it was beautiful to see people coming up to me and saying, when you came through here, you ignited our faith. You, you were very simple, you were funny, you were playful, but you, you ignited my faith. And I found out this, that it's easier to get people to receive what they need to receive from God when they're smiling, when they're laughing. Yeah. You know, they forget about their pain, they forget about their suffering. I give God all the glory because He does it all, and it's nothing to do with me. So when you when you open up people's hearts, maybe, and this is kind of your speaking style, your evangelistic style, when you're speaking to a large crowd, you start with funny stories, you start with jokes, and it opens up their hearts to receive what's coming next is the Word of God. And the Word of God is what heals them. And yes. it's pound, I, and I just talk about simple, simple scriptures like Exodus says that if you follow Him, he will, he will be your Lord, your healer. He will not let any of the diseases fall upon you. I talk about scriptures that just say the Bible's word is is, is both healing to your, your bone and your marrow, even your blood, God heals it. And so I started teaching these things and one of the testimonies in, that we had that was amazing, that really touched me, was this, this older lady, um, she couldn't read. And I prayed for her in November, didn't know that. She couldn't read, she read stuff and she forgot instantly. Well, she met me in this last week in, in March and she said, that not only can she read, but she reads 300 pages a day. What? Not only did she do that, but she, she dropped out of high school because of this problem. And now she went and got her GED, and now she's enrolled in college. So, I mean, it's just not a miracle, but it's a life-changing miracle. Yes. And then even when I got back from Hawaii in November, I had people on Instagram posting, I had a car wreck. I went to your service. I didn't even get to talk to you long, but when I got home, my back was healed. No more pain. For four years, I've had pain. I have no more pain. And then I had the most wonderful thing, I think, was this, this uh, Navy SEAL. And, uh, you know, we all love veterans. I'm a veteran. You're a veteran. And they, a Navy SEAL had MS, had to drop out because of that night. Multiple sclerosis. Yes. This is a debilitating, deadly disease. Yes, yes. In 19 years, he's had this, and he had to drop out. He had a three-star general do his last exam after we prayed for him in November. And in November, he came to, I was preaching up in South Point. He came, that's about three hours from where I was preaching the last day where I prayed for him in South Point where he came up to Waimea, which is about three hours away, just to tell me that he was he was healed and he could feel the healing and he was gonna go get an examination. Well, a three-star general examined him and said, there's no more MS, he was complete remission. What? And I don't... That's unheard of because MS is reportedly an uncurable disease. There's no biological treatment, but you gave uh, Jesus gave a spiritual treatment. Amen. Amen. God can heal anything. The Bible says that in the Old Testament as well. It says there's nothing too difficult for thee. There's nothing, nothing, absolutely anything too difficult for God to heal. Um, if you go on my Facebook, David Yannis Ministries, you will see a lady named Melissa. She will testify to you that she had stories for um, cancer. They sent her home. There's nothing they can do for her. Stage four cancer, about to die. And then she she testified that after the prayer service in January in Katy, Texas, she went to her exam. She felt the healing, but she had, a, you know, you have these appointments precursored already, prearranged. So she went to every single appointment and testified that she was healed. They showed the results and she was healed. They kept wow. going until the, she got to the last testimony. You know, the, the, the glass door, the glass window that behind the doctor's uh, administrative office. Yeah. Uh, her friend's waving behind there, waving at her and says, yeah. Melissa, Melissa, she has a report. She slams it across the glass. You're healed. <laughs> so she was able to testify to everybody in that waiting room, everybody that she went and talked to, and even the doctors themselves in that last one. They were like, we wish we could give this report to everyone. We wish we could just give it to the people in the waiting room. And God wants to give that report yeah. to people. And, and Melissa's testimony, um, she comes in and testifies where her friend flies in from Philadelphia to our next service in Katie a month later. And she had cancer. They removed some stuff in her body. She was completely healed from that, but she was still in the pain from the operations. Yeah. And God healed her during our service. She had no more pain after two, I think two years of pain after surgery. Well, I want to say that, you know, we support doctors and we support medicine, Absolutely. but there's an end, there's a limit to this. When you're sent home to die because you're in stage four and the medicine is no longer working, Jesus is the only one who can cure that kind of illness. 
And you've seen those kind of miracles. I've seen those kind of miracles and even simple things that we didn't even know happened. You know, I believe this. I believe when you pray in your walk with God, just like we're here right here, there's a radiance of God around you. That anything, any, anything can be touched. And like that's what I talk about uh, Peter's shadow anointing. It wasn't just the shadow anointing; it was the anointing that was on him that was just radiant. That people just got around yeah. and were able to get healed. So I'm over there uh, praying in in in, uh, Nor in Kona. I ask a lady. I always ask a lady to come help me. One of the prayer boards of the church to come and just lay hands on the women for me. I put my hands on their stomach or something like that. And well, she was very hesitant because she had psoriasis, and she was so embarrassed to go up there and put her hand, which was blistered and scratched up on people and it was flaring up that day happened to be flaring up that day well she helped me the whole day she said i'm just gonna be obedient father when she got home she looked at her hand she had no more psoriasis we never prayed for her oh my gosh and not only that the next morning she woke up every scar was gone from her psoriasis that she scratched on what? for years she was completely healed that's a miracle now get this this is another amazing story i'm in mexico now I'm over there eating tacos, praise God. The first time I went to Mexico, they served me lasagna. Come on, I want, I, <laughs> Wait, I, I want tacos when I go to Mexico. I know, where's the enchiladas? Where's the tacos? This is, what is this? And they go, it's called lasagna. And I'm like, no. <laughs> but so, so they got tacos going the second time I went. Well, the second time I went, I'm um, showing with my phone your pictures of, um, you know, in Asheville, uh, Alaska, all the places I've been over the year, just to these, to these my Mexican friends. And I'm always showing them we're eating two hours after service. This lady who had bad eyesight, reaches on my shoulder to look at the, the pictures because she had she went to squint she was squinting the minute she touched my shoulder her eyes were healed this two hours later the scales fell off her eyes she's jumping in the corner praising wow. god and she goes i don't know when it was but i believe it's what i touched you i just everything just I, I go i don't know what happened but i can see perfectly she could read um, from a distance then so that's just, it's like the song i once was blind but now i see <laughs> absolutely so we see those amazing things we see those amazing testimonies and it's not it's not hard to believe that what you put out there in faith god will deliver and the Bible says when Jesus looked at the fig tree, when they came back with the disciples, they were all amazed. And Jesus kind of looked at them, come on, you seen blind eyes here? You seen 5,000 fed and you're excited about a fig tree? Yeah. Don't you know how powerful your words are? Well, this book is full of scriptures. It's yes. Bible based and it talks about healing scriptures so you can receive your healing miracle. I want you to tell people where they can buy this book. Uh, you can buy it anywhere online, any of the booksellers, Amazon, Barnes Noble. Uh, you can order it from Whitaker House, or you can just um, go on davidyanezministries.com, and you can order it from there as well. David Yanez, Y-A-N-E-Z, Y-A-N-E-Z, davidyanezministries.com. The book is Igniter of Faith, wherever books are sold. David, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you so much. Appreciate the time. Yeah. All right. I'm Dr. Chaps, and I'm going to ask you, if you need a healing miracle today, we have prayer operators ready to stand by and answer your phone calls during regular business hours. Or if you call after hours, go ahead and leave a message. We'll get back to you. But pick up the phone and call us. If you want prayer, call us at 866-Obey-God. We will pray with you. Again, 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Please sign a petition, sign up for our free emails, or donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. We'll see you next time. Today I want to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.